weeks and days go by, this fight is looking better and better as opposed to dimming. Surreal versus Francis, and I can never get around, and I won't ever be able to, how we got here. Particularly, if Surreal's to win. Now, I realize we're six months from having that answer, but if Surreal Gong is to win and take the belt off of Francis, this will be a major how-did-we-get-here moment, because Surreal should not be in there with Francis. Surreal never would have been given his opportunity to fight Francis, not anywhere in the next 18 to 24 months. There was no competitive architecture in place to take Surreal, who started this sport in 2018, had never done a meaningful interview promo, had never called out somebody meaningful, had been in there in some pretty damn big fights. Junior Dos Santos is a former champion of the world. Rosenstruck is flat scary. I understand it, but these things were still going under the radar. And I not, had I not just brought it to your attention, Surreal and his team most certainly hadn't either. So Surreal wanted to have been in this spot. You had your big three. Francis, Stipe, Derek Lewis. You had one wild card. And every weight class always has a wild card. Every bracket, March Madness, any way you want to do it. Everybody's got a wild card. But once you establish the big three and the wild card, you're all done talking. And the wild card in this class for that time was John Jones. So if you're Francis, you can very much lock your training, lock your preparation, go to bed, visualize each night. Derek Lewis, John Jones, Stipe Miocic. And that is going to take your life, your training, your sport, and your career for the next 18 months. A year and a half is handled. I don't know the order yet, but I got the guys. And every day that I go into practice, this is the guy, this is the skills that I need to be working on to defend and to offensively beat. Pretty good spot. Not a perfect spot for Francis, but that's a pretty good spot once you've identified and it goes in that order. I bring that to you because now all of a sudden you have the immersion of Surreal. Now, Surreal is a tougher fight than Derek. A week ago, that would have been speculative. Now we have the evidence. We know for sure Surreal Gong is a better fighter than Derek Lewis. So Francis could have gone in against Derek Lewis, Derek who already has a win over him, who is wildly popular with the audience, as is Francis. Francis could have got a whole jackpot full of money in a much safer fight. Now there's no guarantee that Francis was going to beat Derek. That isn't the point that I'm attempting to make right now. I am proving my premise by telling you that Surreal is a harder fight than the one Francis could have had. And the only person that created the opportunity for Surreal, who, who now emerged a number one contender and a legitimate threat, is Francis. And I don't know who called that shot. I don't know if that was Francis or that was the manager. I only know within my own career, there was people that I trusted. I would turn to Clayton, by example. I would suspect that Francis did the same thing, but he might not have. This might not have been his team's call. It might have been him stepping in, but I do have to remind you, Francis didn't have a problem fighting Derek Lewis as per the info that we've been given. He had a problem fighting Derek Lewis under said circumstances, which was specifically the date. He wasn't ready to fight on that date. He didn't feel that he could be ready to fight on that date. Said he was traveling and things like this and not in the gym enough. So now he will have a full training camp. He will have full preparation. The difference is he will be fighting somebody significantly better than who he needed to be fighting. And that part of the story can't be lost or you'll be missing the real juice of this. So Real Gone was never a title contender. He was never going to be fighting Francis. He was never going to be the interim champion until a miscalculation by Team Francis opened the door of opportunity that Surreal walked through. It's very relevant. Very. Your number one thing that you need to do as champion is make sure you keep that belt. And there's a lot of ways to do it. There's the part, there's the side that we don't like as viewers, the side that we're seeing right now, just refuse to fight. 
Come up with an excuse, whatever it is, don't get in there, but your next photo shoot with your next company that's going to sponsor you will involve you having a 12 pound gold belt around your shoulder. Okay, one way to do it. Or you can do it the hard way, the Kamara Usman way, which is step in there and have to whip anybody's ass who's coming after you. Either way, your job is to keep that belt. And it would just seem, regardless of how this match goes, but I think we now know enough about Surreal that we do know Surreal can beat him. Doesn't mean he will beat him. I'm not going as far as saying I'm picking Surreal. I've had a lot of time until that match, but stories have already been coming out of those training camps. Apparently, Surreal's current trainer is Francis's old trainer. I read something like that today. I read a story today along those lines. So Francis, for sure, we can at least agree on this, has found himself an opponent that is much more difficult than the opponent that was offered. Somebody screwed up to make that happen. Whether that was Francis, that was his management, it was a collection of the two. I am not ready to tell you guys we're going to see Surreal versus Francis. I'm not. I should be. I realize that's the match that should be next. But I can't help look at what just happened and not learn from it. Francis had an opportunity to fight Derek Lewis. He said no. He's now going to be offered to fight somebody much better than Derek Lewis. It would seem like whatever planes you were on or whatever training camps you were missing or whatever shoulder was, was ailing you, you're going to find a way to a lot more airports and a lot more icy hot.